some of the, I guess, um, structure of the presentation and how we go about with the questions and whatnot. Yes, everyone. Uh, yes, I, I will be doing that as well. So, um, yeah, thank you everyone for joining in. Um, this is the uh, Village of Tavistock uh, New Well Water Supply Well uh, Municipal Class Environmental Assessment Study. Um, we have a number of individuals on the call from Stantec and, um, and from uh, the County of Oxford. Um, what I wanted to uh, to discuss just before we get going um, is just a couple of housekeeping items. Um, I know everyone everyone's time is uh, is valuable this time of year, so thank you for for joining and and uh, and wanting to learn more. Um, I think one of the important things for everyone to consider as we uh, get into the the presentation portion um, is just to be respectful um, to give. Uh, to, to give an opportunity to work through the presentation slides. Um, sometimes we we have comments that do come up um, and there's a chat function um, usually along the top board top bar. Um, it's, it says chat. Um, you can click on there and, and write any comments in um, and they'll be visible for the comment team or the project team. Um, and we can get to those comments at the end of the, uh, at the at the end of the presentation, just so we have time to to work through the material. Um, and uh, you know, it's it's really uh, essential to uh, to to recognize that we're all here for the same purpose to to learn more about the project and hear about um, uh, what is planned, and uh, and also to ask some some good questions at the end. So. Um, uh, with that, um, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Nelson, um, who can uh, uh, discuss the presentation. Um, and oh, and I'll also at, ask that um, individuals keep their microphones off and and also their their cameras off for for this portion. Um, and then we'll we'll uh, ask that individuals uh, turn their microphones on um, during the uh, Q and A portion at the end of the session, um, just so that. Uh, uh, it, it allows um, the presentation to be come through clear for everyone. So thank you very much. Perfect, David. And yes, on that note, I'll be doing the same. I'll be turning off my camera. The other element here is that because we are uh, doing this virtual, it, it's also to make sure we don't bog down the connection and slow things down. So I'm going to do that right now. And then I uh, do want to just make sure hopefully everybody can see the presentation that should be in front of you. So. On that note, uh, again, I want to echo what Don said about uh, being available for this meeting. We do appreciate input from the public and our uh, our uh, stakeholders on this project. So you are here for the Village of Tavistock New uh, Water Supply Well, uh, which is a municipal class EA, and I'll go through what that means. Uh, but again, want to thank you, uh, everybody for your time today. OK, so what's the purpose of this public consultation meeting? Essentially, there's four different elements here. Uh, the first one is we want to provide an explanation of the study process itself. You know, what does it mean to be doing an EA for those that may not be familiar? We want to provide an overview of the evaluation of alternative solutions. So the EA is focused on trying to figure out different ways to solve a problem and then through that to evaluate each of those potential solutions to arrive at the best decision. We want to be we want to provide an overview of at least what we've established to be the preliminary referred alternative. This is obviously uh, the solution that we've identified at this stage that we believe uh, should be implemented, but you know, subject to getting input from the public and agencies and whatnot. And then finally, and you know, most importantly, we want to provide an opportunity to uh, for you to learn about the project and to get involved. And it's not just today. You'll see on a few slides that follow. There's separate processes. So uh, what are we doing? That's always a good question. So as noted, the study is seeking to confirm a preferred solution to add additional water supply to Tavistock in order to meet uh, the uh, current and future needs of the community. So those needs, uh, you know, or the why, it includes essentially providing additional redundancy to supply and security as it relates to the water system. It also includes the need to support future development within the village and finally, to determine the preferred location and requirements for the new additional supply. So what does this mean for you? This process is undertaken so that we can identify the best solution that ensures a sustainable, reliable, and safe supply of water for the future for both residents and businesses. 
So this is just a bit of a summary of what the EA process is about. This project is being completed in accordance with the Municipal Engineers Association class environmental assessment process. Specifically, it's being undertaken as a Schedule C activity, and this requires that the, these first four steps that you see below are completed as part of the study. Uh, as a Schedule C project, there are opportunities for public input, and this includes two public consultation centers. Today represents the first of those two centers. But as you can see in the arrow below, there's also an opportunity to maintain engagement throughout the study and at the very end to review the ESR or environmental study report that's posted at the end of the project for a 30 day review period. So before we really get into identifying a solution, we obviously need to understand this system that we currently have. Uh, so, you know, in reviewing the uh, Tavistock system, there's a few key elements for those that aren't familiar with it. So Tavistock is currently supplied by three wells, one that is deemed an overburden well and two that are terminated into bedrock. The system currently services about 3000 people. And for those that are familiar with uh, where they are, they're actually located very easy uh, uh, adjacent to the elevated water tower in the center of town. And you can see that on the map there on the right hand side. Uh, the tower itself is there to provide storage for the system and to provide flow equalization. Oh, sorry, let me just go back there. Oh, sorry, folks, let me just go back on the screen above because it looked like it just wanted to time there. There, so sorry about that. So firm capacity of the treatment system is based on the largest well out of service. This is a ministry definition. So in this case, that is well number three of the three wells. So with that, we've got a capacity of 4,061 cubic meters a day. And our current maximum day flow is actually 2,419 cubic meters a day. So we still have a bit of capacity, but obviously we're anticipating growth. So in terms of existing system problems and opportunity, uh, this is obviously a big part of the process. We want to understand the problem so we can understand how to focus a solution. So the first thing is security. The three wells are drawn from the same general location. So any disruption to the facility itself could significantly impact the ability to provide water to top stock. And then, of course, there's a growth uh, element of it. There are about 620 homes and about 19 hectares of lands that are anticipated to be developed by about 2047. The county estimates that this will take us to about 4,106 cubic meters a day, which would actually exceed that capacity that I previously noted. Uh, so the official plan itself uh, shows residential growth trends indicating a max save of about 4,114, and that uh, would exceed capacity by about 2036. So essentially, we developed a problem. Oh, I apologize. We developed a problem and opportunity statement which uh, is described as follows, you would have seen in the notice. The, the village of Tavistock currently receives water services from three wells located within the, uh, within the center of the village near Queens Park. The County of Oxford is initiating this study to explore potential opportunities for a new well uh, supply to improve the security and supply of drinking water for the community. So a little bit of a context in the area, and this is taken from the official plan. You can see here the star. This represents where our wells and our tower is. It's actually within what's called an open space area. Uh, in accordance with the county's official plan and the provincial policy statement, uh, as it relates to municipal water supply systems, there's a several factors that have to be considered in good planning policy. We have to consider forecasted growth. We have to consider emergency service needs, health and safety of the system as it relates to water quality and our natural environment. And then the big thing is that growth should be directed to settlement areas and solutions should make efficient use of land and natural resources. So now the next step of the process was to develop alternative solutions that could potentially address the needs as defined in the problem and opportunity statement that I read out loud. This was done as a two step process where we first uh, where we start first with development of what we call a long list of solutions. Then from there, screen those down to a short list alternative that goes through more detailed analysis. These are noted as follows. Do nothing. This is a status quo as part of the EA process. 
and it's meant to be carried through the assessment. Limit community growth, so this would be planning uh, policy rest uh, restrictions. Oh, sorry about that. Wa uh, water conservation measures, so implement programs and incentives or other measures to reduce demand. Water supply from an adjacent system, essentially that's what it sounds like. We would connect to another uh, town or city. A new well on the same site, exactly as it sounds, drill a well near the other three wells, or a new well at a different location. This screen basically represents, or this image represents the screening criteria we use, the evaluation criteria. And this was used when evaluating each of those shortlisted or longlisted solutions and ultimately even the shortlisted that'll come for, uh, as follows. So they're broken down as social environment. So this is obviously not wanting to impact the public. Cultural environment, uh, you know, being respectful of archeological and cultural heritage resources. Our natural environment, which is basically our aquatics and terrestrial and whatnot. Our technical environment, which means that the solution has to technically work, it has to be compliant to regulations and policies, and obviously meet the intent of the county in terms of service levels. And then uh, finally, the financial, which uh, has to consider overall lowest life cycle costs. So that's both capital and operating costs. So utilizing the criteria, each long list alternative was then screened. This table provides a summary of findings and recommendations on whether the alternative should move forward for more review or should not based on not meeting the problem opportunity statement. So to summarize, the do nothing, as I mentioned, carries forward. It's a requirement of the EA process, so uh, it stays as is. Limit community growth did not move forward because it goes against provincial policy statement and the official plan. Alternative three water conservation did move forward because this is already part of the county's overall water supply strategy. Alternative four supplying uh, or connected to an adjacent system also moved forward for further consideration. A new well on the same site did not move forward because essentially we'd be drawing from the same aquifer that's there now. We would not be addressing these security concerns. And then finally, a uh, new well on a different location was uh, moved forward. Uh, pending a bit more technical review, which I'll get into shortly. So to summarize quickly before I get into the more specific wells, uh, the following alternatives were carried forward for review, and that was from the last uh, slide. The do nothing, the water conservation measures, water supply from an adjacent system, or a new well at a different location. Now, in terms of alternative number six, uh, considering a new well at a different location, before we went too much further, an assessment was done to establish the feasibility of this option. Following a review of available well information and other sources, three potential well sites were identified, and these are identified as W1, W2, and W3, which you can see on the map here. Hopefully you can see it better on your screens. Uh, and this was based on water uh, quantity and quality being available. Now, focusing again on the wells, we also did some screening for natural environment, and that was again to assess whether there's any uh, showstoppers, so to speak, for each of those three sites. So in terms of the natural features, no provincially significant features were noted on any of the sites. Uh, site W1 did have two designated features, and this is uh, ministry terminology, about 120 meters away, and that was essentially the swamp and a marsh community. Site W2 had no designated features, and Site W3 had a deciduous forest and marsh within about 120 meters of the site, but outside of the park area. In terms of potential for aquatic features, uh, while some habitat was noted as being present uh, based on the database review, the water courses were buried. So these are piped systems, so technically water, but not really interacted in terms of surface. Uh, and in terms of groundwater impacts, no measurable response was observed during pumping tests, which were undertaken on each site. It is also noted the site level field assessments. Let me just go back to that. Apologies why this thing's doing that, but it was also noted that site level risk assessments uh, would be potentially undertaken in the future as part of the uh, construction uh, process and hopefully we're on the same slide there. 
think I'm getting a little bit of a late time here, and I apologize for that. So now looking at the alternative three, which was water conservation, as I mentioned, that did get shortlisted. Uh, now there, as I noted, there's already efforts uh, that are part of the county's water operation strategy and would form a part of any selected alternative, even if it was to connect to another water system or drill another well. However, on its own and in relation to the existing supply system only, this solution just would not work. It would not address security and potentially there's only so much conservation we can do to suit growth. So therefore, on its own, it did not move forward as a shortlisted solution. However, the elements of water conservation stay present in any sort of preferred solution. So therefore, based on some additional review, the shortlist of alternatives was further pared down, so to speak, uh, you know, pending this sort of detail. So the following summarizes the review. As previously noted, the do nothing remained in the shortlist as a benchmark against other solutions. While it did register higher in some categories, as it essentially means making no changes, it cannot meet the problem and opportunity statement as it doesn't resolve the issues. Alternative six was deemed to be the preferred servicing solution as noted, and that's a new well at a different location. So the following provides some additional context for alternative six being identified as the preferred solution. So in summary, it essentially results in a localized footprint for infrastructure and construction related impacts such as noise, traffic and aesthetics, which is important. There's less pumping infrastructure than a large transmission main and because we're talking many kilometers from the nearest system that would potentially have supply. There's reduced impact to the natural environment, again, because of the footprint of the project itself. We avoid agricultural areas, water, cross, water crossings, and other designated features. The test wells, all three of them, indicate water supply can be obtained, and it addresses local growth potential and Tavistock water supply system resiliency. So this table provides an overall summary of the evaluation. As noted, site W3 at the North Optimus Park was deemed to be the preferred site. While the site itself was similar to the other locations for many of the criteria, you can see the most preferred, most preferred and whatnot, it stood apart on the technical evaluation, notably that it had the highest water supply potential, which provides additional redundancy to the Tavistock water supply system. So therefore, alternative six, new well at a new site was identified as the preferred uh, servicing solution with site W3 as shown there in the map as preferred site for the following reasons. Again, maintains preferred localized footprint, achieves the highest capacity estimate of 4.3 liters per second per meter, equates to about 40, 45 liters a second, and minimal environmental impact and avoids designated natural environment features. You know, treatment requirements, as noted below, will be determined at the next step of the process when we start to define the solution in greater detail. So this essentially concludes the discussion on how we reach the preferred solution. The next steps in terms of the EA process, as you can see here, is to review and incorporate input re received from the public, including not just today, but obviously comments received after the fact, review agencies and our Indigenous communities. Uh, confirm the preferred well site location based on this input, develop alternative design. So this gets into what we call phase three uh, for the proposed infrastructure needed to support the new well site, and then continue to consult and host public consultation center two to receive input on the preliminary preferred design. And you can see here the steps laid out here. And again, I noted here the environmental study report, which is what we would uh, eventually have as the final report also available for public review. Now, more importantly, we do want to hear from you. Uh, this is the purpose of the EA process is to ensure that we have communication and we're getting input. Uh, as David noted, we would uh, request to have any comments uh, provided to any of our team members by January 4th. And there's a few ways to do it. Comments can also be provided through the Speak Up Oxford site, which is noted uh, below, or co uh, connecting with either Tony or myself. And on that note, that is the end of the formal presentation. I appreciate everyone's patience in listening to me, and I apologize for the slight IT issues, but hopefully it was clear. Thank you.
Thank you very much, uh, Nelson. Um, now um, we will move on to the next portion of this, which is the uh, any questions uh, from individuals that have uh, that have joined in. Um, so I will ask that we do it in uh, in a in order, and um, you can use the reactions. Uh, uh, icon at the top of uh, Teams, um, and there's a there's a hand that you can click, and if you uh, if you wish to do so, then uh, that'll ask you to unmute, and you can uh, you can uh, provide your comment. Um, if once again, if you're not feeling confident or uh, comfortable doing doing that, you can also write uh, write your comments in the chat, um, and then we can we can take them up as as the group. Um, so there's a couple different options there. Um, and also, if you're uh, if if you'd like to go back to a slide um, to help with your your comment, uh, we can do that as well. So, um, with that, is there any comments that uh, people have? All right, Bill, if you want to go forward. Um, what type of in infrastructure is involved? Uh, like, is it just a pump house that's uh, installed over this? And I understand it's just pumped into the water mains. Basically, it 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 doesn't have to have a pipe directly to the tower. Is that correct? Uh, maybe I'll start with that. Uh, so certainly, there's still some elements of the actual uh, the infrastructure that we need to figure out in phase three. And what I mean by that is. In general, this will be a well, but the site itself has to include some form of treatment. So in this case, uh, the county uses sodium hypochlorite or chlorine uh, to provide treatment before it goes into the distribution system. You know, we are still keeping it open as the EA requires us to, to ensure that we look at all the, uh, a lot of solutions. It could just be that we provide treatment at the site and we connect to the water main right in front of the, the site right on the road. Uh, we did consider whether we would have a dedicated say raw water main going to the tower site, but likely that that may get screened out because it would have much more impact. So uh, the building itself or the site itself will likely have to include some form of treatment and that'll get again defined as we work through that next step of the process. Okay. So the ones that are in the park now, there's a, a cement block a pump house that's there. Is that is treatment done in that unit there or is it somewhere outside that building? It's uh, I believe and I'll and I'll let maybe Don or, or Tony confirm it's been it's been a, a little bit since I've been there, but uh, I believe a lot of the treatments also housed within the elevated water tower, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, the tower itself has a pedestal, so there between that and some uh, contact chambers that are buried, it provides the disinfection there. And I'll uh, if Don wants to or Tony for that matter, want to add to anything. It's Don. Yeah, that's correct. Um... That's that's where it is. <clears throat> if we were going to do, we wouldn't go back to that area. I don't think for further treatment. We'd do whatever we had to do. I think at the new location, inside a um, inside a, a building at the new well. And, and you know, a good point with that is a big element here is about security, right? So by able to do the treatment at the new well site, it really enhances this whole security of supply so that if we ever had a shutdown in treatment, we still have a high capacity well that can help provide the town water. Uh, Phil, did you have another comment? Oh, that's good. Thank you. OK, so um, it once it once you're done your comment, if you just put down your hand, that would help. Um, we'll uh, go on to the next comment. Um, Brad, did you want to provide your comment? Oh, sorry, Brad, I can't hear you. I it can't. doesn't look like you're on mute, but uh, we can't hear you yet, Brad. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, it it might be a microphone setting on on your end, so uh, we can always come back to your comment if you just want to to look at that in your system. And, and, um, or uh, in the meantime, you can write a write your comment in the chat. So we'll come back to you. I know it's the wonders of technology. I had my issues a moment ago, so. <laughs> I 
and as I did note, just for everyone's sake, uh, before the next question uh, comes up, is it, it is meant to be a very collaborative process. So, you know, sometimes I'm notorious for thinking about a question after something ends. So by all means, this will get posted in our contact information if you have any questions that follow, even if it's after the session. Absolutely. And um, Nelson, I, I don't know if you wanted to, but uh, you could put up the map and just so people can see where those uh, well locations are. Um, sometimes it's good to kind of have a frame of reference where they are in, in uh, within Tavistock. I think this might be the best one here. And this was the W3 here on the main road on, uh, is the preferred solution. But you could see W1 at the old reservoir site. You can see here on the photos, which is nice, former reservoir site W2 is South Optimus, which is right here, and W3 North Optimus. So Brad, I just wanted to check back to see. Um, were you able to? Yeah, there's no, a, no nothing there. Okay. I see a so chat. Like, oh, I think he added a comment, David, or uh, a question rather. Sorry. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Um. So the question is, would the land have to be purchased from the Optimus Park, or is it land owned by the township? So I think um, what Brad is referring to is the land related to W3 site. So yeah. the W3 and W2 are um, are both within Optimus Park. Um, and the ownership of that um, is uh, is something that probably the, the county may want to talk to. Um, but those are both within that Optimus Park uh, um, area um, w3 is a little bit closer to hope street west um, near uh, a bit of a allowance a road allowance there um, that at the north end of the site but all all within the existing park yeah, it's done yeah. here um, <clears throat> that the, uh, well number three it um it was on municipal property because we had to ask the council for permission for and we signed it they signed loud an easement for us to to put it there but um you know that's where the the test well is it's right now it's it's on the, um, the township property uh that the one that's the preferred alternative uh as far as where the treatment plant would have to be whether that's the optimus park or whether it's somewhere else uh, the raw water supply well doesn't dictate where that needs to be so that has to be part of a site assessment and whether we have to, uh, you know, whether th there's uh, other opportunities, or other placements for it. I think um, I think it's um, there may be other needs here, like there's some property needs maybe to be developed and we have to make sure there's access to it. So uh, I think we need to sit down with the stakeholders and um, think through that, but that uh, we're not at the point to know what we need in terms of the exact building size treatment. Um, and we haven't had any discussions with anyone about placement, but currently where the, the well is, is in the township um, property for the preferred alternative. Um, and then the other park, they allowed us to do a test well in the park that's the other site, which isn't preferred. And then the county owned the property by the uh, reservoir I think it's county property up there from the old reservoir, um, but it's not preferred either. And I think the one of the large things is with the preferred site is just the quantity of water is very good. I don't know if Nelson, you can talk about the fact that that's, that's quite a substantial quantity of good quality water that was, uh, or any of the results from that pumping test that was done. 
Yeah, it, it, you're you're right, Donna. I don't have the conversion to compare it to the other wells in front of me, but it set at about 40, 45 liters a second. Tony probably remembers it as well. It's a, it's a pretty significant supply, even when compared to the wells that are there now. So it certainly helps in terms of that, as we call it, that security and that reliability, more that reliability of supply, but also security because it's separated from where the other wells are. So, Tony, I'm not sure if you recall anything that you may want to add on that. Yeah, I, I think, and Nelson, if you can hear me, the, um, the, the site, at, the preferred site would be equivalent to um, almost, almost as much as two of the wells at the existing site. So in, the, in downtown Tavistock at the park, there's three wells, as you mentioned. Two of them are bedrock wells, one in the overburdened sediments. The two ones, this would be equivalent to those two of those bedrock wells. So it's a really good, the indications from the testing are it's a really good site for quantity yeah. and acceptable quality. Thank you, Tony. Oh, I see we have a question from Ken. Uh, Ken, go ahead if, if you're ready. I uh, I can't hear if if Ken if you're trying to speak I apologize I can't I can't hear possibly the same issue we're having before yeah I I don't see uh, any audio coming through Yeah, I don't think anything's coming through. Oh, let's see. Sorry, Ken, I, I cannot hear. David, did you want to try yeah. to toggle on off? I know it worked for Phil. Yeah. Phil was able to connect on the first question. Yeah, I'm. I'm going to. Uh, I can. I can look at the settings here. Uh, I don't believe that's an issue because the microphone is uh, is active, but um, I, I will definitely check in the meantime. And it did work on the first question, so it could just be a settings issue. But if you're able to, feel free to please add it to the chat. Obviously, if you want to talk to one of us, like I said, there's contact information at the end. Happy to connect afterwards. Did uh, somebody on the on the phone line have a comment? Yes. Can you hear us? Oh yes. Okay. If you can hear me now, I'm on the manual system. Uh, okay. So there's a little more to your preferred site, site three than. It's been coming. It doesn't belong to the Optimist Club. Uh, there's a little story to it. Back in the 1970s, when Canada Farm Distributors Limited bought the Krug Farm, which it was called at the time, uh, my brother and I had bought it. And uh, 10 years later, well, no, before then, we developed some land on the uh, Hope Street, and the council of the day agreed to let us develop it, but we had to leave this road allowance for future development, which 
course, we were happy to do because it was our land behind it, so why wouldn't we? At any rate, uh, then come along in the 80s, and the Optimus Park was being planned by some aggressive local business people in town, and they saw their cooperation uh, because they wanted to service their new building in the park, and there was no services for water off of uh, Woodstock Street, so the other side of our way. So it was to come through here. So we had donated, or donated for a dollar, and it made the road allowance in. And then when the Optimus uh, Park was to get services into the park without going on private land, we agreed to give to the Optimus Park the second park, which is your site three, to them for nothing. In fact, we also paid the cost to have it rezoned and re whatever the legal costs were at the time. So uh, then we come along to approximately three or four years ago when the mayor was in touch with me and I to him, I can't remember, but he, he wanted to sell the road lots. He wanted to sell it and take the profit to, I guess, help with the local tax money. So at any rate, then in the plan, which I have a copy of, they show an aerial photo of the site. And with the with this site here, site three, the last part that we gave to the Optimus, or to the town for the Optimus Club, uh, was showing that it would be returned to Canada Farm History Areas Limited if we agreed to let them sell it. We didn't have to agree, but we were going to oppose it. And I said, well, if you, if you aren't going to use it, we had the sum total of a dollar out of the whole thing over the years. Well, maybe you'd like to return it to uh, return to sender, so to speak. At any rate, uh, when the push came to shove, then it just was a dead issue that died. So now it was quite surprising to me when I drive through town one day recently and I see a drill site that's happening there. We were not notified that it was about to happen or would happen or asked or informed or anything else. You know? When you see a lot of talk about transparency, it seemed to be lacking as far as I was concerned. So I, I, I don't know what to say. I just want you to know the history of that and how it came to be. And it designated the roadway. And I yes, said, uh, so uh, the roadway was asked for by the council, like I said at the time, and uh, for the development now. The, they said, told us that in the, in the past mayor, he said to us it was a bad spot and it, it wouldn't be good and spent some money to show us why it wasn't very good. It's a road allowance, but uh, having a lot of experience with the property, which we've owned for 60 years, um, the dangerous, probably the more dangerous one is the one that occurred to him going into our property. It, it is, uh, looks to be fine, but when you approach the entrance there from from the east, coming from town, leaving town, there's a spot in there which is coming up to a grade, and uh, if you cut across too quickly, there could be a car in the bottom coming up, and you could have a pretty good collision there. But uh, we've always given straight instructions to anyone visiting our warehouse to make sure they get to the top of the hill before they turn. So we thought they had in the second end, which is certainly if you get uh, a lot of homes down in the bottom part, then that it's, it was you know, certainly a better exit than the one up top. At any rate, it looked like the money was lauded very badly to sell the our original lot. And uh, so I'm just telling you this just to fill you in our position is uh, at that time when we said, well, we weren't going to agree with them, we would oppose it, and it went away. So, uh, I was disappointed when I saw what was happening, and we never even were, were uh, Canada Farm Distributors was not informed that anything was happening or anything else, and it was known that we were opposing the sale of it originally. So, and uh, 
So uh, I mean, refers to the Optimus Park as being there, but I never hear kind of the farm distributors mentioned in here. But we were uh, sort of key in the whole area, like providing the land for the park and uh, the bit of development that has happened. And now, of course, on Hope Street, uh, there's a, re excuse me, a recent change there where Apple Homes is starting to do some work in there. Um, anyway, this is just for information to to uh, whoever's on here today. And uh, if we have any questions, uh, you can fill in. I'll try and answer. Thank you, Ken. I do appreciate that that information for sure. And I'm not sure if I, when you were done, if there's anything you want to add to that. No, I'm thankful for information. As I say, the <clears throat> the test well is we had to ask council permission for that uh, access. Um, Tony uh, Latimer and myself and Paul Ibergen went before um, uh, the, the township council to ask for that permission, and we we had a, an agreement signed so we could do that test well. But as far as citing it, uh, quite right. We need to have discussions, um, and and I, I don't I don't have any information about but. Well, we need to cite right now, but uh, maybe Standek uh, can can talk about that. But I think that's a a future point. But I'm glad to have good information about this property, so um, that's welcomed. I see uh, that Phil has his hand up. I'd like to try unmuting. How big a building would be required um, for this pump house uh, and treatment facility, do you think? I'm trying to just visually picture it based on a similar size system. Um, Don, I'm wondering about one, uh, like another county system, like in, uh, in Tilsonburg, for example, some of the well house is there, but I mean, we could be, and now, and again, we, we got to figure out some stuff because we always like to have room uh, for the future to stay within a building, but, uh, you know, a structure itself with treatment inside, which is what we want, it, you know, we could be into a 20 foot by 20 foot, 20 foot by 30 feet, uh, only because, you know, we also have uh, storage for not just uh, like chemical uh, sodium hypochlorite and things like that. We try to keep that all within a building, ideally. Uh, at times, you also have to have a little bit of room off to the side and through an enclosure for generators and things like that. So uh, that's about an, an approximate. But again, once we, because the well is larger, the process piping, what we call process piping inside the building will be a little bit larger. Uh, and we always want to make sure we have room, especially because we have to design these things in terms of safety of the operation staff is making sure they're not tripping over piping, things like that. So sometimes that'll impact the layout of the building. And then we always like to have the ability uh, because future regulations, things like that, you never know, but have the ability to have a bit of room if you had to do something inside the building that we can't foresee at this time. Uh, Don or, or Tony, if you want to add to that, it's a bit of an estimate on my end, just high level. Yeah, when I had uh, visualized what you're saying, that's about right. Although I'd visualized something more like 40 by 40 feet, um, uh, and and only because I don't know if we're going to be um, doing anything with filters in there, but uh, you know that has to be considered if we if we have some further treatment, enhanced treatment might be a little bigger than uh, 20 by 30. But uh, you know, again, it would be it would be for built for. <clears throat> You know, with 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 a look so that it wouldn't um, it would blend in with the, its surroundings. So, um, and you know, noise and odor and all this would be considered. It it uh, it uh, it shouldn't be an eyesore or anything. So, um, you know, I think we can pretty well guarantee that. But uh, but it would be um, something of that size, 40 by 40, 20 by 30, something like that. Does it does, does it need road access? I mean, does it have like is there somebody daily going to that unit then uh, for testing or or? I'm not yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Usually off the road, there might be a little driveway for the, the half ton pickup or something from the operator, 
and then he just uh, he or she would just uh, access it regularly. They have to uh, they have to do that, um, but um, it, it doesn't have to have a lot of parking or anything. It, it's it's just access for an operator. Yeah. So I guess it's safe to say that there's still a lot to discuss as far as the site goes, right? As far as location and and ownership and things like that. Correct? Is that a fair statement? Yeah, that, that's correct. I mean, uh, in, in terms of, as I mentioned, at the phase three of the EA process, we start to, now that we know the preferred site and, and the solution for that matter, is start to look at all the elements, as Don mentioned, you know, do we need to put filters in and what do we need for operational access and, you know, are we putting a generator, where is it going to go? And then, then that starts to develop what we call the design concepts, and that's why we have a public meeting after the fact, even to review those design concepts. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, Ken, did you have another comment? Uh, I see your hand still up. Yes, can you hear me? We're on the, on the manual system here. Can you hear me now? A little uh, bit of paint on my side, though, I think. Sounds a little faint, Ken. Okay, is that better? A little bit. Okay, I just had a comment because up until uh, say eighty, there up until uh, three years ago or four years ago, for thirty-five years, this particular site, being a standard road allowance width, plus a couple hundred feet deep, we we took care of that site and mowed the grass. As if it was ours, like no, we were doing it before. We gave it all away, and we just kept it on for thirty some years. And only miraculously, without being notified or anything else, it just happened to be started to get mowed by itself after it, after the lot was open for sale or off. The council was wanting to sell it. I shouldn't say council because I never talked to council directly. It was always our ex mayor. So just a, a confidence, like we looked after that, say we have a little interest in it and uh, have this happen and not be advised or anything. It's just a little, a little hard to swallow. That's all, I just thought so I'd throw that in. More discussions to come, I'm sure, as you say. Thanks, Ken. Thank you. Any further comments from individuals on here? I just had a look at the chat and I don't see any any there at this time. I know it's been said previously, but um, there is a, there are more opportunities for uh, for public comment later on. There's that additional um, um, public consultation center towards the end of the project where more details will be coming back. Um, and, um, you know, to continue this conversation along um, and also um, at the end of the project, there's the environmental study report, which will be prepared. Um, and that um, really summarizes uh, the work done um, and from all from each of the phases uh, for this project so far um, and uh, and provided for um, a minimum of 30 day review. So, uh, you know, certainly many, many more opportunities to continue the discussion as it was said. Yeah, for sure. Uh, 
Ken, did you have another comment? Hi, yeah. Um, for oh. curiosity, I'm um, Patrick, the Ken son. Um, you say the, the Site 3 meets the demand of the two existing wells, now what, the water tower? Everybody right? The two wells. Well, 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 well yeah. site number two, like you're looking for an additional 1,500 cubic meters a day, and how does that compute if you were using that one for your new volume? Man. Sorry, so how does, if I, sorry, it was a bit in and out, but um, how does well to compare to our deficit that we showed in that one? Uh, yeah, if you're looking for 4,000 meters in the future, well, where does that put you with well number two for that number? Uh, well, I don't have the exact numbers for well number two, but the one thing we do want to be a bit uh, careful about is, number one, well two definitely did not have near the capacity of well three. Uh, as as Tony mentioned, well three has the ability to essentially replace two of the wells. They're providing way more uh, security. So it's not just about meeting that growth number. Uh, and even then, you know, the 2043 is just the current projection of growth based on the official plan window. But obviously we try to build infrastructure. We always say within our business, we try to build infrastructure ideally that is 50, 60, 70 years out as much as possible. So this well, three just provides so much more in terms of that but so it really uh, meets and exceeds the demand forecasted in this narrower 20-year uh, planning window but more importantly provides the security that well well two or well one cannot on on their own and I apologize because it was a little faint if I um, covered off that question uh, enough and Tony if you happen to remember what the capacity in well two was I didn't have in front of me but uh I know it was not uh, was not up to well three. No, uh, Nelson. Well three was the best of the three test well sites uh, by without question, and that's the reason why it's it's the preferred of the three. Yeah. Can you guys still hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Um, what was the result of well site number one? Um, uh, I missed that if you had the capacity. Um, can I answer that, Nelson? Sure. Thanks, Tony. Yeah. So, so I think um, what 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 these three well sites they've they've had test wells put in, so they're they're smaller diameter wells that are used and tested up to a certain capacity. They're, they're not sized for, at this point, for full production well use, like the ones that exist at the, you know, at Queens Park at the existing site. So just bearing that in mind, of these three test wells, the well one was the lowest uh, specific capacity or the lowest uh, apparent quantity that we would get at that site. Well number two was was the middle, and well number three was the best. Uh, if I could comment further, when we it's Ken again on that well one, uh, that used to be the town's water supply. As some of you may or may not know, I was on the Public Utilities Commission in Tavistock for 25 years, spent uh, almost half of those as chairman. And I can remember when uh, that was decommissioned up there, and we uh, decommissioned the original pipe that fed gravity from the, that site, which was like an open bathtub, uh, down to the tower. It got pumped up. Uh, that was uh, a wooden, a wooden. Uh, I don't remember the size, but, but it was a wooden pipe that went from there down to the tower. And that pipe, when we dug it up, was as solid as the day it was put in. And that was in 1912. I remember that because that was the day, the year my dad was born. And uh, at any rate, that did supply all of the water for Tavistock up until in the 70s, I believe it was. And uh, yeah, so that was there when we put up the new tower and the like, whatever was there till the close of the utility in the year 2000. So I'm just, Curious about the, you know how the the consumption or what the production could be off of it. 
So can if I can, all the water is almost like a spring. It would just flow into the into the uh, swimming pool for all the 24 hours a day and it would just be pumped down as needed. And quite an interesting system. Sure, it didn't cost much. <laughs> At any rate, that's just a bit of history there. Thanks, Nelson. I'll just comment. Um, I I was involved back in the early '90s um, when when the Tavistock system had some upgrades, and and at the time uh, we did some upgrades to Well Two and and built and later drilled a new well, which is now Well Three. At that time, Ken, I think the the um, uh, the, the PUC decided that that reservoir site uh, was had a vulnerable. The message we got had was a little too vulnerable to potential contamination, so they decided to um, not continue to use it at that time. That would have been in the you know around the late eighties, early nineties. In this case here, where but the county still owns the property, so it was a good candidate to to uh, look at the bedrock aquifer. So the the main Tavistock aquifer is in the bedrock, and um, I'm not really sure where that original reservoir well was completed uh, because we did we never did have a record of it, and it apparently went way back. But uh, this new test well, well one or test well one is is in the bedrock, so it's in the Tavistock aquifer. And like I mentioned, it was it was the least productive of the three sites tested. Tony, uh, were you? What was your dad's name? My my dad wasn't involved in it. <laughs> he was he was he was he was gone by then. No, but uh, were you from Paris? The family? Yes, that's yeah. I was with a company called Lotta Water at the time. Right. Well, I dealt with you then. Yep. My brother yeah. Tim was involved. Right. Yeah, they were a customer of ours. Anyway, just ask me thanks. Thank you everyone for the comments so far. I'm just gonna go or just ask again for anyone if, uh, if you do have any comments uh, and let us know um, in the chat or or to raise your hand if you'd rather uh, talk to them. We'll have some individuals around on on uh, after um, as um, it, you know to stick around if there's any other comments that come in, but. Um, just want to give it give an opportunity if there's anything uh, anything they'd like to say about the presentation. We uh, we will be here uh, until eight o'clock. Um, obviously, we don't want to hold anyone up who hasn't had dinner yet. <laughs> so feel free. You certainly can stay um, to listen in if there is any other questions or whatnot. Um, as David mentioned, this this will be posted as well, um, and there's a few you know few ways to get a hold of us. Like I said, I come up with my best questions when I walk away from meetings at times. So if that happens, if you have any more questions, feel free to reach out. But we also want to invite people if you do want to get on with your evening. 
uh, it's okay. We're sometimes we have these meetings and no one shows up, and it's just the consultants and the the uh, municipality talking to each other. So we appreciate uh, the interest in the project. Bill, um, did you want to? Yeah. yeah. What's your best estimate of uh, timing, like when uh, when this would be fully? fully completed just ballpark uh do you mean in terms of the study itself bill or in terms uh, of well i guess in terms of uh operation you know operational like the wells installed operational but i know you know it's tough to do that because there's a lot to do yet but just the ballpark i guess so maybe i'll start by at least talking about the study itself so we are uh targeting having um you know getting through the next phase of what we call phase three with the design development as we were discussing and having that in front of the county and going through our you know our review with those processes and then back to the public in the spring of next year and then uh in hopefully the early to mid-summer at the latest is having the ESR, the environmental study report. Uh, and that's important because we do need to complete the study in provinces, Ontario. This is what you have to do before you can start to construct anything. Maybe on that note, I'll turn it over to either Don or Tony in terms of the plan about, you know, the, the actual construction works. All right, thank you, certainly. Um, <clears throat> what we put in the, the budget before County Council was that we complete the EA in 2023 and then um, we had some money allocated there um, in 2024 because we have to really at that point develop the site so we we and that's a big unknown uh, once that site's been developed and, and we got a design underway it's going to take the rest of 2024 maybe some of 25 and then um, I think by the end of 26 maybe the first quarter of 27, you should have productive well. Um, that would be the whole construction phase that would go on on there. So so um, that's my prediction. It, it could go faster, but um, I think that would be the timeline. Thanks, Phil. So I'm not seeing any more comments uh, in the uh, participant list or in the chat. Um, I'm just going to we'll, we'll wait another, um, let's say five minutes or so, and then um, if there's no fur none further, um, we'll we'll stop the recording and and um, um, but participants or um, project team representatives will be uh, still on the line. Um, if there are any any further comments, um, but once again, um, Nelson, did you want to um, put the last slide up? Absolutely. Thanks, Dave. The last slide shows um, comment information there um, for um, phone or email comments. Um, you can uh, certainly provide those um, if you think about anything like Nelson said after the meeting. Um, there's also that speak up Oxford uh, County .ca, uh, link where um, you know future notices will be posted um, 
And once the report is is complete, um, I would envision that the environmental study report would be also um, put there with a link, um, so individuals can can look through that um, during the 30 day um, review period, um, and also um, the notification for the uh, public uh, the next public meeting uh, would also be on there. So it's, it's certainly something to put into your uh, your browser um, link. Um, so that you can uh, keep an eye on that as the as the study moves forward. But um, yeah, that contact information is there if anyone has any further comments. So with that, um, um, yeah, thank you for everyone that did uh, did attend. Um, certainly, um, it's always great to hear uh, um, you know individuals uh, for their comments and perspective on this. Um, and uh, and thank you for for attending. Um, I'll, I'll we'll leave the um, leave the chat going for a while yet. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Phil, did you have another uh, comment? I'm going to play the devil's advocate here for a second. In, in case there's land acquisition required for the associated structure and things like that for this well, and in case those are impossible, let's just say to to uh, to make happen, is there is there an option somewhere that you may have to go back to well one or something as a fail safe where those issues wouldn't be a problem or is that not part of the part of the plan at all do you think you know it certainly is a really good question phil and i mean first step we try to do is to do enough investigation to make sure from a quantity quality, but obviously there's a few other things as, as we've all noted that still need to get figured out, which is you know normal in the process. I, uh, I'm i gonna maybe, Don, if you don't mind, I'm gonna maybe hand it over to you from, from the perspective of the county's view about ways to maybe mitigate uh, whether it's, you know, concerns of, of what Phil brought up land or whatnot and and how W1 or whatnot would play in and Tony perhaps even yourself in terms of the uh, the results of W1 and I can I can also add into that one a bit. Okay sure I think um, I think one thing I heard director David Simpson say was that um, you know this is a good spot for the well where the test well is but that raw water that can be a pipe underground and it can go, <clears throat> it doesn't have to go right in that location. So there's gonna be a lot of options. We can take the water somewhere else and treat it and put it back into the water main. So, um, you know, we're not really, um, we're not forced to be just in the proximity of where that, that well is. We don't wanna move that well necessarily because then there's a risk. Not the big one, but there's a risk that maybe we wouldn't get the the same production somewhere else. So I think we want to just leave that 
test well and use that spot, but it doesn't mean we have to have a building right there. Um, so there's going to be a lot of options. It, it, now, having said that, if, if it just isn't practical, I guess uh, I guess that's a, 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 a something we're going to know early because we have to really decide on the site um, and the design of it as we go forward here. So, um, you know, then then we might have to change direction. But that that um, I wouldn't I wouldn't necessarily say that that's our first uh, option. I think the first option would be to investigate where could we take that plant where it could be situated and and just have the pipe uh, come to it, have the raw water supply come to the treatment plant. And I think that's a really good point that Don brings up, because again, when we focus about that capacity, um, you know, and it, the ability for it to even enhance that security of supply, right? The fact that it replaces the two wells, we don't want to lose that potential benefit of having it. So yes, it may be looking at different design solutions as, as Don had noted. Very good question, Phil, thank you. Right, thank you. Um, I'm going to uh, now. Uh, so we'll we'll stop the recorded portion of this and um, and and finish off the meeting. But like I said, there the, there's still an opportunity if there are if there are further questions to uh, for project team members to stay on the line. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>